Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Monday morning at 9 a.m., and we are glad that you're joining us for our Mount Olive Live Facebook devotions, later posted on YouTube as we go through the Gospel of Mark. And as we make our way in the Gospel of Mark, we're going to find ourselves today in Mark chapter 9. And so go ahead and get out your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 9. And when you get there, you can go ahead and hit the share button. Jesus is teaching his disciples. And what we learned on Friday was that the disciples could not cast out this demon from this boy who was demon possessed, not because they didn't have training, because they had already done that in Mark chapter 6. But this time they couldn't do it because they were leaning on their own power their own understanding, and Jesus would tell them, this demon only comes out by the power of prayer. And prayer is submitting to God's power, not our own power. And so these disciples have been instructed on why they failed. And disciple means lifelong learner. And so for you and I as disciples of Jesus, we continue to be lifelong learners. We continue to learn and grow more and more each and every day in our faith and our relationship with the Lord. And so Jesus is our Savior, our Lord. He's also our teacher. And so He teaches us things through His Word, through His life, through His example, and through His Holy Spirit, who is that counselor who lives in us. And as students, sometimes you don't understand what the teacher is teaching. And so when you were in school, and a teacher was teaching something and you didn't understand, what kind of student were you? Were you the kind of student that raised your hand and was not afraid to ask? Did you instead maybe ask a friend there in class or later on? Or did you just not ask at all? And so when you don't know something, do you have that fear of being afraid to ask when it comes to teacher and student? What kind of student were you when it came to something that you didn't understand? That's the question this morning. Did you raise your hand and ask? Did you ask somebody else? Or did you just not ask at all? And then the question becomes for us as disciples and followers of Jesus, when we need help, <coughs> when we need help, do we ask somebody for help? Or do we not ask somebody for help? Or do we just ask somebody that we're comfortable with? And so that is the question for us today, because what we're going to see in today's devotion is that the disciples do not understand what Jesus is going to teach them, and it is going to tell us that they are afraid to ask. And so let's look at Mark chapter 9, looking at verses 30 through 32 this morning. They went on from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know. And so Jesus just had this huge crowd, which we saw a lot in the Gospel of Mark throughout, this big crowd following Jesus and pressing in on Jesus. And this time it was because of the healing of the demon-possessed boy who has had seizures. And so now Jesus is taking his disciples away from the crowd so that he can have an important teaching conversation with them. As he just had an important conversation with them of teaching them, why they were unable to cast out that demon because they didn't use the power of prayer. And so now he's going to follow up after them not using the power of prayer to cast out the demon with a very important teaching. This teaching is going to be so important that Jesus is going to repeat it three times in Mark 8 through Mark chapter 10. He's going to repeat it three times and all three times the disciples are not going to understand what he is saying. But what's important is not only the prediction that Jesus makes and fulfills a prophecy that he's going to go to a cross, suffer and die and raise himself from the grave, but what's important too is the teaching of what he uses when he follows that up. In Mark chapter eight, when Jesus first predicted that he was going to go to Jerusalem, be rejected, suffer and die, and three days later raise himself from the grave, the teaching where he followed up after that was for us as disciples to deny ourselves to take up our cross and follow him. Here we're going to see the prediction repeated, but the teaching and application afterwards and the narrative setting is going to be different. We look at verse 31. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, 
the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed after three days, he will rise. So his second prediction of the cross, as Jesus is going to make his way to Jerusalem. And it says he's going to be delivered. And that word delivered is a very important word for us theologically. We remember in the Old Testament, God delivered his people from 430 years of Egyptian slavery with a savior at that time for them, a leader we call Big Mo, Moses, and he delivered them. And we saw God continue to deliver his people in the book of Judges and throughout the Old Testament. And here he's gonna deliver them of the ultimate need that they have, and that is from their sins. And so with this word delivered, means that Jesus is gonna deliver us from our sins through the cross, but also too, he's gonna to be delivered. He's gonna be handed over. We know that Judas is gonna betray him. He's gonna go into the hands of Herod, the hands of Pilate, and he's gonna be delivered eventually over to the Romans for crucifixion. And so Jesus is telling us when he goes to the cross, he's gonna be delivered, he's gonna be handed over, and he's gonna humble himself, humble himself to death on a cross. That is an amazing thing, that God would die for you and for me, that he would come from heaven to walk upon this sinful world, to take on the sins of the world, even though he's innocent and perfect and righteous, to show his love for you and for me and for the salvation of the world. And so it says he's gonna be delivered into the hands, they're gonna kill him, verse 32. But the disciples, they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Maybe their fear is because what just happened is that they failed and they couldn't cast out that demon because they didn't use the power of prayer. Maybe it's because they're uncomfortable and fearful of Jesus talking about death. Sometimes that can just be an awkward conversation in and of itself. Maybe they're fearful too that now this is the second time he's saying it and they don't understand and so they are afraid to ask, but for whatever reason, they're afraid to ask Jesus what he means and they don't understand. We remember in that last prediction, the application was then, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Tomorrow we're gonna to see a different application after this prediction. And what we remember here is that the cross was not an accident. It wasn't that something went wrong and Jesus was killed. This is the reason why he came. And that's why he predicts it three times in Mark chapter eight through Mark 10. It's all about the cross. I don't know about you, but I have crosses all over my house and I have one around my neck. And it just reminds me of my mission in life, my identity, my purpose, that I'm a child of God. and reminds me, no matter how I feel today, that I know how God feels about me that he loves me, that he dies for me, that he has a plan and a purpose for me, and that my life is about something so much bigger and greater than myself. It's about a kingdom of God that lasts forever, that by his grace, by the power of his Holy Spirit, he's called us into that. And so today we are reminded of the cross. We're reminded of a savior who loves us and a savior who loves us so much that it's okay to ask him questions. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to have fear. Jesus actually says, we should not fear. And we don't have to fear because we have a God who loves us and cares for us. And so as we continue to be his disciples and learn and grow, we remember discipleship is about apostleship. That each and every one of us, we learn and grow to go out to spread the good news and to be that missionary for Jesus Christ. In our home, in our relationships, where we work, where we go to school, in our community, every place you go today, see yourself as a missionary who shares the good news of Jesus. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we start off today, we start off with the power of your word, the power of your love and your grace, and we are thankful, Lord, that you went to a cross for us, and not just for us, but for all the people of the world. Lord, we pray for the world today. We pray for those in Ukraine. Lord, we pray for those who undergo battle, and for those who today will pay the ultimate price and sacrifice for freedom. As we look to the cross and we see that you paid the ultimate price for our freedom, our freedom of sins, your grace and our salvation. Lord, to be a part of a kingdom that does not end, but rules and reigns forever. And so Lord, we're thankful 
for your victory over the cross, that you defeated sin, death, and the devil, and that the enemy does not win, but you win, and you get the last word. As you send us out today, Lord, help us to proclaim and to share the good news as we continue to live for you. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed day as you go out today to be used by the Lord with the mission of the cross.